Better Business. Welcome to Better Business for Good TV, Small Business Matters. I'm your host, Brenda Thompson, co-founder of the Better Business for Good Company. On today's episode, I'm talking with Kerry Ann Nelson from Operation Verve about the importance of having great systems to get the best outcomes when working with remote teams. This episode was recorded live at the May 2021 Connect, Collaborate, Contribute event in collaboration with our impact partners, Just Peoples. We had some fun technology challenges during this event, and I lost connection for part of the interview. A huge thank you to Kerry Ann, who carried on regardless, and to Lisa Wyking from the Business Launch Strategist, and Katie Patterson from Katie Patterson Consulting, who stepped into the breach on my behalf. Welcome, Kerry. I am so pleased to have, to have you here talking today about putting in place systems to take care of remote staff, because I recently got a remote staff member as well, and I discovered, even though I thought, I'm a queen of systems too, I'm really good at systems and processes, and my filing is good and all those things, but I discovered when I had a remote staff member that there were actually quite a few gaps in my yes. system, in my systems and processes that I that I hadn't realised were there. So, just before I kick off with the questions, I'm just going to make a point to everybody that there were plenty of time for you to ask Katie questions afterwards. So, if you have questions, I mean, Kat, Katie, carry questions afterwards. So, if you have questions, make a note of them, and then when we when we finished my little sort of interviewee part then we'll, you'll be able to either put your questions in the chat box or come up on stage and actually ask Kerry your questions yourself. And yeah, is there anything else I needed to say? Apart from how wonderful Kerry absolutely is. I got that book really, I think it was when you first published, just before you published it, wasn't it, Kerry? Yeah, and yeah, you were one of the first. It's, so, it's just so detailed and structured and processed, which which is process driven, which is absolutely what you need if you're going to actually make things things work in this environment. So, mm -hmm. Kerry, let's yes. start with the challenges. What are some of the challenges of remote work? Yes, okay. Um, it's, it's funny, you know, because the whole world has changed over this last sort of 18 months and people that were going along to, you know, their offices uh, didn't realise what it was like. I've been working from home for, oh goodness, easily five or six years now. No, I think it's even longer than that. Uh, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. And um, and so it really is an adjustment. It's a massive adjustment um, to um, keeping your head sane um, and keeping yourself connected. Um, and so that's the first one, um, loneliness and disconnection. They say that 19% of remote workers or people working from home, or, you know, not having that contact with people, uh, um, say that they're experiencing loneliness and disconnection. And it, it's genuinely a real thing. Um, it's so amazing that we've got tools like this that we can still connect and, you know, meet with our friends and do the thing. But there's nothing like a human squeeze, is there, like being able to um, just share. Um, so that loneliness and disconnection is something that if you're managing remote workers, uh, you need to be really on top of that, um, making sure that you're sending messages, that you're using your chat and using, putting GIFs in there and photos in there and making the, uh, the workplace really fun, even though you're all just sitting at your desk in your own, you know, home or your own um, uh, workspace remotely. So, yeah, um, bridging that gap to make sure. Um, distractions at home is another really big one. If you're working at home and um, I know <laughs> Joanna, I, I, Johanna, Remote work should really. Oh, I've lost Brenda. Oh, I'm back. I'm sure she'll revisit us. I might just keep going. <laughs> um, and if she if she doesn't come back in two minutes, we'll all just freak out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're back. You're here, Lisa. Um, and anyway, I'll keep going. Um, so um, yeah, the flexibility really does mean that you know if you want to if you if you know your dog's going to need a walk in the middle of the day, <laughs> you can start half an hour earlier and then have that half hour break in the middle of the day. You know you can really sort of the time is so much more flexible and you can use that to your advantage to help to smooth out the bumps of distractions. Um, communication problems is another big one. Um, people think that they know what their their um, their workmate meant when they're sitting in a chat. But if you're not actually speaking um, in face to face, person to person, there can be those communication problems. Um, so, and in actual fact, 44% uh, of um, of remote workers say that glitches in the communication actually really affect their relationship with their boss, their managers, um, and their peers. So, 
that's something to be careful of. And that really does come back down to making sure your expectations are really clear, having task uh, outlines um, documented, having little instruction videos, and then having regular meetings um, with people um, daily. There's nothing wrong with a five or 10 minute daily huddle to start the meet, to start the day. Um, yeah. Get everyone on the same page, align your goals and off you go. Um, that can help with the loneliness too, of course. Yeah. Um, it blocks for collaboration. It can be really difficult to work, you know, alongside people when, when you're working apart. But there's stacks of tools that you can use to help overcome that. Um, Lucidchart, Miro, um, Google Jamboard is one that I know of I've never used. Um, that, that but made, stacks I, of I, visual like whiteboard sort of tools um, that can help to really bring people's ideas together. Um, and then uh, two more, keeping healthy boundaries. I know um, I did an ABC um, uh, like survey uh, the other day and it, one of the questions was, um, Has your uh, is your health and well-being better or worse since the pandemic? And I'm like, I know mine's worse. I've put on weight. It's hard to stay fresh and alive and vibrant when you've got this. Um, so keeping it, this sort of lifestyle, so keeping healthy boundaries, making sure that when you're on, you're on, and when you're off, you're off. Um, and having set times to to not have video calls and, and so you can actually concentrate and be productive and get work done, uh, really, really important. And then the last thing, of course, is the tech. You know, when your microphone isn't working and you can't join the meeting or you get booted off the internet, the other day I was halfway through a meeting and my computer literally decided to shut itself down. Oh, my like, you bastard. I can't do anything here. So, um, yeah, navigating the tech, even simple things like, you know, re, uh, rebooting your modem um, is, is annoying. But then using a new tool can also be really difficult. And, um, and again, that really is about preparation. Uh, making sure that you've got um, a clear understanding, you practice using the tech that you need to use before it's showtime is, uh, is yeah, really valuable and important. So hopefully yeah, all of those can help. Now, I don't know. Can Lovely. you guys hear so me again? Tell me, Kerry, <clears throat> what are some of the what? questions, sorry, what problems that your clients have had that you've solved? Like what are the presenting problems uh, of, of what it is that you do? Yeah. Um, a, a lot of those things, uh, people uh, people being frustrated when their workers aren't doing what they need them to do. Yeah. Um, so they think that they've communicated really clearly and then their worker just, they're, they're just not doing it. There's been a communication glitch. Uh, that yeah. can be really hard. Um, another really big problem, not so much tied to remote work, but, um, but the solution is. Um, so being tied to all the work themselves. So they're an expert. Um, they've started their business because they want to leverage and, and, um, and you know, um, their expertise and build a business that gives them financial freedom, lifestyle freedom, lifestyle business. Um, and then all of a sudden they've, they've created this business trap for themselves that they can't get off the tools and, uh, and business growth becomes an absolute nightmare. Um, yeah. and so in that way, uh, they might feel like they're in this insulated bubble of trauma um, and yet the way out really is to employ people. Um, and even if you're the only expert, your um, people can pay your bills, people can answer yes. your emails, people can write up processes, people can manage your social media, your books. There are so many, um, you know, those peripheral jobs that um, you don't necessarily, if you're passionate about that core expert thing that you're really good at, um, yeah. You can grow your business quite away just by getting rid of everything else and yeah. that's where remote workers um, can offer a really valuable solution. Um, yeah. And particularly if you're comfortable with going offshore, not everyone is, but, um, you know, it's a really valuable um, uh, and viable uh, option to employ people that, for you know, I, I've got two remote staff um, in the Philippines. For me, it feels cheap. For them, it's changed their life. So um, it's a massive win-win um, and I personally have found Filipinos really um, uh, keen to learn, uh, supportive, so positive, uh, will bend over backwards. Um, and the trick with managing the Filipinos that I've worked with certainly um, is always to tell them when to stop working. Um, they will just keep working. They will just keep yeah. going. No, it's <laughs> over now. Just do it tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, but, yeah, that's the solution to um, if you're tired to all the work of the growth yourself, outsource some of that stuff that's peripheral. So, yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah. So, so, so can I ask a question, Kerry Ann? Yes. Um, so, what do you decide on what you're not going to do versus what you're going to do? Oh, great question. I love this question. Um, the task you should be delegating, so the task you hate, the tasks that are um, repetitive. So if you're if you're writing up a blog every single week, you're posting around social media every single day, um, you've got bills that are going to stay the same um, until kingdom come. You know, it, we've got to pay our Telstra bill or Optus or Vodafone, or whoever you're with. Um, uh, get someone else to do that stuff. Um, and then finally, the tasks that, uh, that are really labour intensive, the things that are just they're sucking your time. They're low value for you. They have to be done, um, but, um, yeah, not necessarily by you. So they're the three tasks that you should be getting rid of. Um, and, again, remote workers can do all of those things. Um, and then the tasks you should be keeping are the ones that light you up, first of all. They're, you should, for me, I've got a great skill set. I could work for someone else and make a truckload of money. I don't want to. I love owning my own time. I love owning my own space and working in my tracksuit pants. I love that. <laughs> so, um, so to be able to um, choose the things that you love, they're the things that you should be keeping and the things that you're really, really good at. So, um, yeah, I hope I hope that helps. Yeah, it does. And the other thing, um, Kerry ann is what about, making sure that these people, the remote people that you work with, whether it's um, Philippines or, you know, down the road yeah. in the next suburb, um, how do you keep them motivated? Because I'm, I would imagine if they continue to do the same things, like pay your bills, like, you know, um, do your processes, your admin, that stuff, they'd pretty, probably get bored. So how do you keep them stimulated? Ah, that's a good question. There's a... Um there's a lot of different approaches there. I have found, and, and not only with me too, um, I've had a few clients that have worked really closely with their with their remote staff, their employees, because I don't need to work necessarily with the owner. I can work with people actually doing the work each day. So uh, so that helps. And, um, and I really have found that that personal connection, and I know, Katie, it's something you're really passionate about as well, um, that when you've, you build genuine relationships in the company, people will bend over backwards to help. They, If they feel valued, they feel acknowledged, they feel respected, um, you know, when they do a good job, tell them. Send them a little meme. Put a gift in the mail. Give them a bonus pay. Um, send them a little gift or a card. Like uh, there are so many ways to make your remote staff feel appreciated and feel really connected uh, and practical ways. And, um, and if you're like me, I've got a memory like a sieve. Seriously, I, I'm like a fish in a fishbowl. I don't remember stuff. And I think it's why I've sort of got this strength in systems because I'm terrible at remembering. So set reminders, like every quarter, set a reminder. Send one of your staff a gift. Just, you know, make a tiny little system for it. Put it in your calendar. And, um, and, and that you'll really reap rewards. Other things to keep them motivated, though, um, track their performance. And uh, it's and again, this is not something that it, this is something that you're looking for ways to support and acknowledge. You're not looking for every time they've made a mistake. So there's a real mindset thing that happens here. Um, you are you are looking for ways to bring out the best in your remote staff. So by tracking their performance, you're going to see when have they earned a bonus reward. Um, uh, or when do they actually need support? Um, I have a philosophy um, that. If someone has made a mistake and, and all things being equal, if you've got a good relationship with them and, and something has gone wrong, um, it's not their fault. People don't want to do a bad job. It, and and the, the best way to fix it is to fix the system behind the performance, not just drill at the person. Oh, you were meant to post this today. Okay, what happened? You missed that. Um, is there something I can do to help you? Let's have a look at the instructions and make sure it's clear. Um, so, yeah, so um, tracking their performance and uh, making sure that you're aware of what they're doing so they feel like their work is valuable. Um, and then, like I said earlier, uh, daily huddles um, to keep people on track. Oh, and one more thing that I do with, with my staff and encourage my um, clients to do this too is task swap days. So mix it up. If you've got instructions that are really, really good, uh, they should be uh, able to be followed by anyone in any circumstance and um, achieve the same result. 
So um, what that means is that once a month, you could have half a day where you literally swap tasks um, and say, there you go, there's the instructions, do her work for the day, do his work for the day, see how you go. And it mixes it up. It's a really great way of cross-training and, um, and it allows them to upskill uh, and also connect and say, oh, I didn't know how you did that. Oh, that's amazing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, and I want to say one more thing too. I'm totally off script here, but, um, but also... <laughs> allowing them to direct their own processes. So um, uh, so we've just, um, with Bronwyn's advice here too, we've just um, decided to move to ClickUp as our task management software. And um, I literally don't have time to set it up. I'm, I'm flat strapped right now. And so I said to my VAs, do you reckon you could do this? I know they can, um, but it means me not giving the same amount of support that I normally would. And, uh, and so they're all pumped. And, um, and I said, okay, so as you go, make videos, show us how to set up this system, show us how to set new tasks, show us how to set up workspace, show us how to add new guests, um, all of that. will be, And they'll be documenting as they go. So empowering your remote workers to head projects up and, um, and build their own processes is another really motivating way to keep them engaged and performing. Thank you. That's <laughs> fantastic. Yay. I'll jump off stage now because Brenda's, Brenda's Thank you, Katie. here. <laughs> I I wasn't at all sure that you could, could that I was actually back because I could see me and I could hear you, but it yeah. looked like nobody thought I was here. So yeah, no, you were vanished into the ether. I just vanished into the ether. <laughs> that was most most peculiar. Yeah, I actually had to leave the room and come back in and as I was leaving the room I was thinking oh my goodness don't let this be me kicking everybody else out but of course <laughs> I had all the all so I and I just can't say how much I appreciate how beautifully Lisa and Katie stepped into the void there that was amazing what a fantastic supportive team I have Agreed. okay so maybe it's maybe it's a good time now for I guess I'm sure we had more questions here but because I kind of disappeared into the ether for a little while I'm not quite sure what happened there how far, that, how far out of our schedule are we, Brenda? Uh, oh, look, we've got another sort of six or so minutes if you want okay. to, if you've got more stuff. If you wanted to talk more about tools, I think that was... Uh, yeah, that's the one question I want to answer. Okay, well, let's, okay. Do, let's talk about tools. Yeah, tools tools to use to um, manage your remote workers um, because without tools, uh, you, you simply are going to fail. <laughs> you're going to let them down. Your business is, not, is going to come to a grinding halt, literally. So, if, uh, of course... Um, the, uh, the hub of everything should be a task management software. Um, so that is what will keep work working and, uh, and people moving. So no matter which task management software you choose, um, you should have uh, the task management software should automatically schedule um, tasks uh, and allow them to be recurring. So if the task is happening daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, uh, so that you set it and forget it uh, and, and it just goes on autopilot. Um, the software should allow for fast updates. You should literally be able to click on the task and change the text. It should have links, images um, to make the instructions super duper clear. Um, so that, and you should be able to edit those really, really easily. Of course, you should be assigning team members with your task management software so that people know what they have to do. Uh, and you should be able to change those really easily in case someone is away um, that you can see what needs to be uh, urgently covered. Um, you should have the ability for the people doing the task to mark them as complete so you can track their performance. Um, and then you should also be able to review their performance. So, um, sorry, review the task completion. So let's say uh, once a month you want to check in and see how um, your, uh, your uh, remote worker is doing with a particular task. You should be able to set it as reviewable. Assign yourself is one way of doing that. So that whenever you want to just jump in, um, that you can see, all right, yep, they're still on track and checking, actually checking the, the outcomes that they're creating. Um, you should, you, a good task management software should be able to say, right, when this task is done, the next one is activated. So you can have a sequence that flows. Um, it should allow for routine tasks that are not done to a set schedule. So, so a classic one of that is an onboarding process. Let's say you've you've worked with Katie and you've built out a really sexy looking onboarding process. Um, that's not going to happen on a, on a schedule, but when you need to use it, you're going to have a yeah. set list of things. 
so you want to make sure that you can have a, a set of tasks that you can just say, right, activate now, assign to that day, and off you go, or days, uh, and off you go. And then the last one, you should um, have a chat against every task. So the task comes up that you need to do X. Underneath that, the people involved should be able to chat in case issues come up, problems come up, questions come up. Uh, yeah, so the, so out of all of those 11 different things, they're the things you should be looking for when you're looking for a task management software. And um, those 11 things are available um, in some way, shape or form in monday.com, in ClickUp, and in a software that my friend developed called Dashboard Online. I think they're so available they're, in process.st as well, but I'm not 100% sure. So there we go. I'm not as big a fan of that software. You don't like that one? Um, no, no cool. I don't. <laughs> That's good. That's I don't. I don't think it allows you to get to the depth. And um, they've got, uh -huh. it, it automatically creates a flow chart that is just very confusing, right. I think. But, but there anyway. you go. So, yeah. then you might, if, if, so those were Monday. Monday, click, click up, up and, and click up. Click up. And dashboard online. Right. Excellent. There we go. Yeah. Three recommendations that, that do all the right things. So is there anything else you wanted to add before I open questions? I hope you enjoyed this episode of Small Business Matters. On the next episode, I'll be talking with Michelle Barnard-Marks from Redline Digital about Google's core web vitals, a set of factors designed to measure how users experience the speed, responsiveness, and visual stability of your website. Core Web Vitals will become key Google ranking single signals from June 2021. That's now, so this is a session you won't want to miss. You can catch the recording by subscribing to the Better Business for Good newsletter or join us live at the next Connect, Collaborate, Contribute event with our impact partners, Just Peoples, on 30 June. All the details are on our website at bb4g.co. Better Business for Good TV. By small business owners, for small business owners.